scanning for audio. Welcome to the Tin Dog Podcast. The first car cast in a very long time. Blue tack to the dashboard while I chat away to you. I don't know what number this is going to be. I don't even know when it's going to go out. Because you see, I've been sent a challenge. The guy over at Tmidwip, that's the minute Doctor Who podcast. Yes, go on. You know you watch it. And watch it, I mean watch it, because it's a video Doctor Who podcast. Ah, the great and glorious days of video editing. How I miss them, but that's not what I'm here to discuss. I've got certificates in it. No, what I am here to discuss is something he mentioned on one of his last shows. Obscure fan theories that you've come to believe. Also, theories that no one else believes. And if you mention them out loud, people go, Are you sure? And you try and present them with evidence, and they just go nodding politely. And remember, in life... One of the single most important lessons you can have is to nod politely sometimes. So, he wanted my obscure, odd Doctor Who themes. Now, you have to remember, I am of a certain age, I loved the McCoy era, and I read all of the Doctor Who novels. Yeah, well, I say all, most. I own them all. I really should sell them. To eBay! No, no, back, back up, back up. Right. My theory is quite simple. Before the Doctor left Gallifrey, he had a mundane job. We've established that he had not a particularly good degree, which he only managed to scrape when he did his second sitting. Romana uh, got a quadruple first or something odd like that, but uh, the Doctor got the same sort of degree that a lot of people get. Uh, It's a subtle attempt to make him more of an everyman to certain people. So the Doctor's working away on Gallifrey. Now, here comes my theory, influenced quite heavily by the Seventh Doctor. He worked in a museum. That's the reason that as the Eleventh Doctor he likes museums. Because trust me, once you've worked in a museum, you really want to work there again. And you want to visit them, and you simply adore them. So, you've got old Mr Hartnell, or young William Hartnell's incarnation of the Doctor working in a Gallifreyan museum. A bit like, say, the Royal Armouries in Leeds or the National Maritime Museum. Something like that. Something with a lot of defunct weapons. That's the important bit. The Doctor comes across various items. Now, when he's his student days, he manages to have miniscopes outlawed. See, all of these fit with the facts that we've been presented of an underachiever with better things to do at university. So, he's working at the museum, and he realises that some of the things in the museum are particularly dangerous. One of the things in the museum is a Type 40 TARDIS. See, Doctor's wife. Other things in this museum include Silver Nemesis, the Hand of Omega, the Hot Water Bottle of Doom, that kind of thing. The Doctor realises that somebody out there is coming for them. He doesn't know who. He gets his only surviving relative, Susan. Now, this is again my fan theory, that the rest of his family was killed, which is why he doesn't talk about them, in an uprising, possibly, probably of a political nature. There's always some sort of power struggle. If you're immortal, you've got very little else to do. The First Doctor is afraid. His natural state is timidness. He's left his first regeneration plod on far too long. That's why he looks like an old man. He doesn't want to regenerate. He's a bit frightened. Now, this is the bit I don't actually like admitting. 
The reason he's frightened is because he's <clears throat> half human on his mother's side, which could explain why his family was killed in the first place. They were killed in a cleansing cull. The Doctor doesn't want any of these weapons to fall into the hands of the new emerging powers on Gallifrey. So, he steals a TARDIS, or the TARDIS steals him. Getting inside his head, making him more braver, he gets his only surviving relative, Susan. He gets these weapons of mass destruction, uh, the hot water bottle of doom. And then heads off towards a very, very insignificant little blue-green planet on the outer eastern rim of the galaxy. At this point, the Earth is insignificant. Its importance has not been noted. The Daleks do not exist. I've given this a lot of thought, as you can probably tell. Continuing. The Doctor travels to Earth. He buries the Hand of Omega. He also manages to ditch Silver Nemesis. Not sure how and why, but the chances are he ditched that first. Realised that Susan needed a decent education, couldn't actually control the TARDIS and ended up in 1963. So he's hidden all of these weapons on the insignificant planet Earth. The meddlesome, troublesome teachers stumble on board, interfering as there is their want. And the series begins. Story number two. The Daleks, or whatever you want to call it. I know that there are some extremely high up, het up fans out there who want to give it the name The Mutants or The Dead Planet or, or whatever you want to call it. This story of the Daleks. Imagine if the Doctor hadn't have faked the missing fluid link. Or imagine the original timeline, more likely, where the Doctor never left Gallifrey. The Doctor's interference in this story sets off the chain of events that ends with the Time War. By leaving Gallifrey with the weapons to protect them, he ends up signing the death warrant, eventually, I'll grant you, for his entire race. The Daleks realise that there is life beyond Skaro. Something that, well, let's face it, do you have any inkling to the space dimension correlated to relative time? I.e. aliens, life Davros has said that there is no such thing as life on other planets, etc, etc. The Daleks do not believe in life beyond Skaro. They already have universal supremacy on the grounds that there isn't anywhere else in the universe to go to. Even if they destroy the Thals, they never leave Skaro. Look at it the other way. The Thals themselves may have stumbled in earlier or later or attacked the city of their own volition. A different plan. A different way of doing things. The Thals may have defeated the Khalid mutants. They weren't particularly good. All you needed to do was shut down their power, after all. So these mutants are beaten by Thals. And the Thal Empire, half people, half cyborgs, is so much worse than the Daleks. They're the people the Doctor was trying to escape from. The Thal Empire. Now that's a big finished series waiting to happen. So yeah, that's my fan theory. The Doctor, inadvertently, by leaving Gallifrey, causes everything. Now admittedly, the Big Bang, the original Big Bang, or the second one, wouldn't have happened, and it needs to have happened in the first place, but we'll get back to you on that one. Hydrogen inrush, etc. So perhaps my story's got holes in it, but that's my fan theory. Over to you. Over to you. Be seeing you. You've been listening to the Tin Dog Podcast. Doctor Who and its associated shows a copyright of the BBC. No infringement is intended. To contact the show, email tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. To order, or simply find out more about the book, Astrology: The Time Traveller's Almanac, visit astrology.com. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. Mm-hmm.